In this video we're going to build the set for our render scene. Now the first thing I want to do is just kind of try and find out where I want the robot to be uh, in this scene and then choose probably a format for the image so I could go for kind of a, a landscape image or a portrait style and I'm, I'm just going to work towards doing something in portrait style because it fits the size of him uh, and this is just kind of like a, a beauty render just to show off the model a little bit. Um, so I'm going to keep him fairly full screen. I'll keep a bit of space at the top and bottom. Um, but before I carry on, I'm just going to go into my render settings. And in the output, I'm going to choose uh, one of the, the presets. And I'm going to use an A5 portrait print. Um, but I'm just going to reduce this down to 150 just for while we're doing test renders, because that makes it 1240 pixels tall, uh, which is easy enough for us to cope with while we're rendering. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about any of the other render settings for now. I'm just going to keep this one here. And you can see we've got our guides here to just help us line things up. Uh, also, just while we carry on with doing this as well, I'm also just going to uh, add a camera to the scene. Now, I've got a shortcut here, but you'll find the cameras in here. And I'm going to check that target box there, which means we're looking through the camera. So I can now change the focal length. Uh, at the moment, his head's just a bit too exaggerated. And you can just play with the sliders here to, to try and get the kind of look you, you'd want. Um, so I'm just going to make that a probably a longer lens and then I'm going to just pull back from the robot. Now if I just select the robot, I'm holding the option key here to just swing the view around and that is actually moving the camera still but it means that the, the, the position of the camera's rotation is based on that robot instead of the camera's position because if I do it with the camera selected, you can see he swings out of view and it's not particularly helpful. So I'm just going to set up his body at a bit of an angle uh, just so I can get some nice highlights on these edges. And then when we come to actually setting up the final render, I'll just kind of move the position of his head to look towards the camera a bit more. And maybe I can peel back the door to show the heart or all those kind of things. But for now, all I want to do is just kind of get him in position. So I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the camera, right click, and go to cinema tags, and you can't see it, but I'm looking for the one that says protection, and it's an orange kind of circle with a, a, a bar through it, a bit like the, uh, the no entry signs on a road sign. That's this one here. And that just means that I can't now move the camera. Um, I'm trying to move it around with the normal controls and it's not working, and that's what we want. And if we need to look at the scene from a different view, you can just uncheck the look through camera box, and you can then move around the scene as you would expect. But for now, I'm going to go into my side view and I'm going to first off start with creating the backdrop. And one thing I can do now as well is I can remove this reference image. I don't need that anymore. So I can go to configure back and I'll just delete that image from there because I don't need it. And that just makes the viewport a bit clearer for us to see through. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to build our psych, and this is just a curved backdrop. Now there's a few different ways you can do this, but I, I prefer to draw it with a linear spline, and I'm just going to start here. So I've lined that first point up with the, the, the trackball at the bottom of his foot, and I'm just going to use the z-axis to pull that back. And I'm going at a fair distance just so we, we know we've got some space and the, the camera won't kind of miss it when we get to render time. I'm going to add another one at the same kind of height. And we know that the, the height for this is going to be minus 228.671. So I'm just going to copy that in case I get it wrong. I'm just going to add a second point here. And you can see that's not quite right. So I'm just going to paste that back in like so. Move this forward further in the z-axis so it's actually backwards compared to the robot. Um, I'm going to drag that back to about there. I want a fairly big space because I'm going to curve this off. I'm going to take it just a bit further and then I'm going to add another one just up so it, that's, if you look at the, the angle of the camera which is the green kind of pyramid you can see I want it to go higher than this is going to see so if you follow these lines up you kind of want to go just a bit further than that so I'm going to go to there. I'm going to hit the space bar to drop that tool and I'm going to select the uh, the central or the, the, the middle of the three points that I drew. I'm going to hit V, edit spline and I'm going to go to chamfer. You could just press soft interpolation but you'll see that that kind of skews out what you're doing which uh, 
you then have to go into the handles and start playing. So I'm going to use the chamfer tool, which will keep these two straight edges, but it will just round off this one if we click and drag in the viewport to the right. Now that didn't do much, and that's just because the scale we're working at, but if you come over to the radius, just grab the, the arrows, you can slide them up until you're happy. And I'm going to make this quite a big. I'm going to make it actually taller than him, the curve. I want it to be just a bit taller than him. And now I'm going to hit the spacebar again just to drop that tool. And I want to add this into an extrude nerves. So I'm dropping that spline into the extrude nerves. And at the moment, if we select that extrude in the attributes manager, you can see that this is these go X, Y, Z, and we don't want this going in the Z because it means that the extrusion is going away from the robot and we want to go across him. So I'm just going to put zero in there. I'm going to go into one of my front views or my perspective view. Just back out until I can see that object. And at the moment, it's just a, a thin line because there's no extrusion. And I'll just slide that across. And I'll probably make this pretty wide. Let's go for about 3,000 and see what it looks like. And I can move that object across. Now I just want to look in my camera view just to make sure that everything is covered and at the moment it's not because the camera's not quite positioned where I want it so I'm just going to take that protection tag off just swing it around and we'll actually rotate the robot when we come to rendering so I can just drop that tag back on. It saves you can just put the tag onto a different object uh, just to, so you don't have to then go and right click and add it back in again. Okay so I will actually just rotate the robot just so I've got a better sense of what I'm doing further down the line. Okay, now I've been working on the uh, the robot 42 or bot 42 scene file but I'm going to save this out as a new file because I want to make this a render scene and I don't really want to have all this stuff going on with the robot so I'm just going to go to save as and I'll keep this in the modeling stages folder but we'll just call this um, bot, let's call this bot beauty render like so and then we don't have to worry about if we use the robot in a scene uh, for an animation or whatever then we don't have to worry about removing all of this gunk we've just added now okay so let's call this the psych which is our set I'm also going to add some subdivisions um, because sometimes you'll find when you get to adding GI into the scene you'll get weird lines uh, across the back of this object um, and that's just down to how uh, cinema interprets the extrude nerves. I'm also going to make it editable now. I'm happy with that and I'm going to drop it into a hyper nerves just to smooth it off just a little bit more. So we'll just call this psych smooth. You may not need to use it and it will just add more polygons and if you don't really want the more the more polygon count in your scene then it's useful to just be able to turn that off and see the results because they might be fine. Okay so next part is to create a sky object and I'm just going to go into here add a sky object and to this I'm going to drop an HDR so I need to just grab in here now you can see because I've opened my object manager and it's kind of further to the to the left than I've had it before you can see some of my icons are gone but if you grab in the gray space between icon sets you can slide that to the left and right and that works in all the different menus you might have if you run out of space you can slide them around so just opening my content browser and I'm going to go into my favorites in the HDRI folder I have one here which I'm just going to drag into my manager like so and the HDRs have uh, luminance data in them um, and when you apply them or drag an image into your material manager it will create a new HDR material uh, and that's this one here I'll just select this and by default they'll go into the color channel and because it's an EXR or a .HDR file they're the two kinds of high dynamic range images that you get um, you don't need to worry about putting the image in luminance to provide any lighting data uh, we can just switch off the specular though we don't need that all we want is the data in here for the color and because it being an HDR and the lighting and this will provide reflections for the soft boxes and the, the little hot spots for spotlights and things as well as something to reflect in shiny materials um, as well as lighting so that's what we'll do there now I can't provide the HDR images myself uh, just because I don't have the licenses to share them but there are lots of places online that you can get them um, so I have a search on Google for just free HDR uh, a good place to get them is hdrlabs.com 
um, you'll find a few things in there as well as the the Sybil loader which I've talked about um, in uh, a tutorial on my website but they're basically um, a collection of HDRs um, and some lighting rigs all built together or there's the Grayscale Gorilla uh, Light Kit Pro which I had a part in building um, which will let you either light your your scene with some lights or with HDRs there's also a baker in there so you can build some lights and set up your scene and then create an image um, so you've just got an HDR to put on a sky object instead of having all the different lights in the scene uh, which is fine once you've locked everything down um, but the, the benefit of HDRs is you can do it with a DSLR you can go out and you can take panoramic shots and what you would do is you would actually um, bracket your exposure so you'd have uh, a slightly underexposed and a slightly overexposed image as well as the standard image and then stitch them together now actually creating the HDR from that is a bit outside the scope of this course but there's a, a few places online you can find out about it and there's there, there's lots of free HDRs and, and that means that you can actually you can take something that you've created digitally like we're using here um, or you could use a photograph of a location um, which you might find very useful because you could um, if you were compositing the robot into a scene say you could match the lighting and reflections perfectly um, by using a probe or by taking panoramic photos um, so I hope that's been of some help anyway let's crack on and this will provide some of the lighting actually this will provide quite a lot of the lighting I'm going to drag that onto my sky object uh, which I don't need to be visible and if I was working on various parts of the scene I might actually find that it gets in the way a little bit or just is a bit too distracting so what you can do is right click on an object that you don't want to be seen by the camera as you're working um, but you do want it to affect the render so you can go to cinema 4d tags compositing and just uncheck scene by camera and that now means that this uh, sky object is is not visible here uh, if I was to hide the site you can see it's I just need to hide that from the render you can see it's not there if I recheck scene by camera you can see it is there now the one reason you might want to leave this scene by a camera is because the image we're using I'm just going to come away from that camera view and zoom right out is because you can see that there are lights here there's a, a softbox above one to the, the back of the robot which means that the other one will be around in front of him and that's not quite what I want I want this to be kind of round so I've got one to the left and one to the right and the sky object can be rotated just like any other so I'm going to select it choose my rotation tool and just swing that around until I've got one light to each side like so you can also see there's a, a spotlight down here and there's a couple of other lights bumming around as well there's one up there okay so now I can go back in to get a bit closer to my robot I might even swing that sky around just a touch more let's look through the camera and see where it is okay it's not too bad actually so I can bring my sight back go back into the camera uh, the sky object select my compositing tag and un uncheck scene by camera okay so for lighting a scene by HDR it can look good but sometimes you don't quite get the the power from a light that you want because the lights are already been set uh, in a previous scene to actually create that HDR or they could have been made in an external program sometimes you want just a bit more versatility and now we'll just look at building a light that when we come to render uh, we can adjust and set the intensity and angle and get a bit more kind of shadow and uh, we can also use it for some caustic so we might get some nice highlights flaring out of the lens here things like that so what we need to do is just add a simple plane to the scene now you can see the plane here is not the right angle what we want this to actually represent is our light um, so if you imagine having a softbox on the front of the light we want this to be angled kind of in the right direction towards our robot and then just pull back in position uh, I'm going to do this first of all in the top view it's sometimes just a bit trickier to, to get this lined up in the right place uh, so let's just make sure we're not looking through our camera and then we can rotate around and just drag this into position where we want it so I'm going to bring that around to about I want it fairly side on I don't want it too too, too much from the front because uh, I want this to pick up some, some nice kind of powerful highlights at the side and then, okay so that's a good angle I'm also going to make it just a bit taller so I'm going to take this plane and just make the height 
just a bit taller and the width I'm going to reduce. I'm also going to make the segments less as well. Uh, I don't need 20 in each way, in fact it can just be one, it's fine. Now I'm going to add a material to this because we're going to call this, let's call this uh, light left and I'm going to double click in the material manager just to open this up I will add a color and I'm going to add a gradient to here so I click on the texture and come down to gradient open up the gradient and choose circular now I want this to be black at the edges so I'm just going to swap these around to start with and I want this gradient to be just a bit harder towards the edge and I'm going to make the the center one actually can stay white now because this is going to be luminance as well 100% white there's not too much of a problem um, but I'm going to add another one about halfway between the two and I'll make this kind of a warmer creamy color like so and you can see that already this has got the kind of a rough appearance of being a light uh, if you were to look at one kind of squinting at it that's kind of what it would look like okay now that's all I really need to do in the color channel I'm also going to copy that channel and paste it into the luminance channel. Uh, so paste channel, I'm going to turn off specular, don't need that. And I'm going to drag that material, which we'll call light left, because it's coming from the left of our scene. And it's going to drag it onto there. And you can see in the viewport that that's updated. And you can see that we've got the kind of the rough idea of a light going on. Now. I'm not going to do any test renders just yet, so we'll need to tweak the, the intensity of or the luminosity value for this to be able to affect the scene in the way we want. Um, but that's uh, just a quick tweak, and we'll do a couple of test renders when we get into the actual setting up the, the, the render settings. Now you can add as many of these as you want, um, and they'll have really nice, very soft, subtle shadows. In fact, they're not really shadows at all, but you, you'll see the effect when we get to rendering. Um, now I'm just going to add one more of those and I'm just going to control and drag that one out and I'm going to call this one light right and I'm just going to pop it over to the other side and the only reason I'm doing it like this is just because it's just a bit quicker than adding another plane so I'm going to drag that over I'm just going to flip it round to where I want it now I'm just using oops, I'll use the main viewport to do this actually I'm not looking through the camera so I'm just going to rotate it slightly more from the back and I'm just move this like so and I'm also going to decrease the height of this one I want this one to be a little bit squarer and I'll just drag it down touch like so don't forget we'll have the light information from the HDR as well as these two um, I'm also going to control click and drag this material to make a new one and I'm going to make the gradient here just a slightly different color um, I'm going to go for actually something completely different let's go for a nice cool blue so we'll add a cool blue for this one and go back up to texture copy channel into the luminance paste channel and that just means that we've only had to make the one material and I can drag that one onto light right just to replace it okay so now there's one more thing that you might want to do um, and that's add something for reflections to show now these two planes because they're actual geometry not just uh, cinema 4d lights they will show in reflections and um, but sometimes it's nice to have something kind of behind the camera so that any any faces of the model that you're trying to render uh, that are, are kind of pointing towards you will have something to rent to kind of reflect as well um, and what I do for this is I'm going to add another plane. Now you could do this all in one box, uh, but because we've got the sky with the HDR, it doesn't work quite so well. Uh, and I prefer working with the HDR because you get a really nice kind of ambient lighting going on as well, uh, which for beauty renders can work quite nicely. Uh, so I've got this plane in the scene and I want it facing down the Z axis. So I'm just going to flip that round. Uh, I'm going to go into my top view here, just zoom out a bit. And I'm going to drag this plane right behind the camera so just maneuver yourself there and I'm going to make sure that it lines up with the site so we don't have any gaps in the reflection um, and you'll see why in a second so I'm going to just increase the size of this quite a lot I want it to pretty much cover the whole area of that site 
which I think actually was 3000 for the extrusion. So that should be about right. Just line it up. Doesn't have to be exact in the width, uh, but we do want it intersecting on the floor. So I'll make the height of this, let's say 1000 and just raise it up and make sure that it intersects slightly. Let's take that back a little bit as well. So if we go into our perspective view now, um, we can see that we've got this site here and then we've got the two lights. We've got the sky that you can't see in the viewport at the moment and then we've got this plane. Now I might make this plane just a bit taller. Uh, let's make it 2000 and I'll raise it up just so that we've got more to add to the reflection. Now I'm just going to make a new material and I'm going to call this reflection plane. And to this, I'm just going to apply a color at uh, one well, uh, in the color channel. I don't want the specular channel. I only want the color channel. I'm going to add an image and I'll give you this image. It'll be in the assets folder and we'll add the photo studio. So this image will be shown in any reflections um, quite subtly and we can blur it a touch maybe as well if we need to. Uh, so just add that in. And I think this is going to be okay, but we will blur it just to touch, just 5%. Okay, so we need to just apply this to our plane. Again, that plane doesn't need to be 20 segments wide or tall, so we can put one in for that. And you can see that he's now standing in a photographic studio. Uh, he's got the backdrop there for him. And let's just make sure it's the right way up. That would help. Uh, in fact, we might just be able to change the direction of the plane because I had it in plus C it's probably better off in minus C so that's all now suitable and looking nice and that will give some nice reflections so we can come back in here and just save our scene I'm going to look through the camera uh, I'll just do a, a very quick render region there's not going to be any GI so this is going to look horrible but just to kind of get an idea uh, without any guides in the way of what our image is going to be focused on So this is kind of what we're going to be looking at. Um, this is very, very ugly, but don't worry, we'll get that looking good in the next video.